New tonight, Sarah Palin has failed at her most recent attempt at a political comeback. She lost the special election for a vacant House seat in Alaska. That seat is now flipping to a Democrat for the first time since 1972. Here to discuss, former U.S. Representative Abby Finkenauer and CNN political commentators Errol Lewis and S.E. Cup. S.E., let me start with you. Sarah Palin. Yeah. Huge, <laughs> huge name her. recognition. Yeah, yeah, we have heard of her. And that, yep. But that was, the, that was the play. She had the name recognition, didn't win. Well, I think Errol and I were just talking about this, a fellow Daily News alum. I've had a Daily News column for 12 years, yeah. in part because the first column I wrote was about Sarah Palin, is what people thought her name was. We were trying to figure out the pronunciation. No one knew who she was. Right. right. And I liked her story. I thought it was really impressive. And I thought, as much as she might have hurt John McCain, she also helped John McCain. But we all know what happened after. She resigned the governor. She went on to be Fox famous, and she wanted to sort of follow fame. And I, I get that she looked at this landscape with the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Matt Gateses and the Lauren Boberts and thought, great, finally a chance to be famous and not have to govern all that much. But I think Alaskans were really turned off and felt abandoned by her when she left the state and kind of, you know, in search of um, more famous pastures. So I it, think that was the result. Is this about Sarah Palin specifically? There's no kind of um, uh, lesson that Republicans can glean from this law? Well, I mean, if they wanted to take a lesson from it, it might well be that um, the local needs, in this case, Alaska gets only one representative, they've got to get it right. And right. Um, they've got a salmon shortage. They've got real problems there. They've got climate change issues, just like everywhere else. Um, and uh, it, it seems like voters don't necessarily want to throw it away on somebody who's going to get up and sort of uh, do the celebrity thing. They'll, you know, leadership and celebrity are two different things. And Sarah Palin... Uh, dropped one and went in the other direction. I don't know if they're looking for a celebrity there. That's a lesson that Republicans ought to take mm -hmm. to heart. I mean, let's also not sell the Democratic uh, now winner yeah. short here. I mean, Mary Paltola, Pal um, first Native Alaskan ever to be elected. I think that says something. Um, also, a Democrat hasn't won in, what, 50 years in that seat. I mean, that says something. And I think it's going to be, again, just another indicator that Democrats have a heck of a lot more hope going into 2022 than we did a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Let's turn now to uh, Dr. Oz and some, if not conflicting, inconsistent comments on um, abortion. So we're going to play first what he said in May of this year. This was during the primary. And then we're going to play something from an interview he did in 2019 where he talks about uh, heartbeat bills uh, that were being passed. Let's watch. I do believe life starts at conception, and I've said that multiple times. When life starts at conception, why do you care what age the heart starts beating at? It's you know, it's not it's still murder if you were to, to, to terminate a child, whether the heart's beating or not. Now, what are your thoughts on Alabama this and these anti-abortion laws that they're passing in Alabama? Well, that they've passed. Is that healthy? I'm I'm really worried about it. And the other thing is this whole thing about heart beating. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're electrical. Changes at six weeks, but the heart's not beating. Mm -hmm. If you if you were if you were to say, starting from when we can hear the heart, like mm -hmm. when the heart's really doing something, that would be different. Mm -hmm. That's not six weeks though. Well, which is it? I mean, how can you believe both of those in the span of three years? Well, you can if you're a politician and you're running, right? I mean, the, it's a little unsurprising, especially Dr. Oz. He's got this sort of label as flip flopping and not really being from Pennsylvania and running one way in a primary and another now in a general, and not all that su surprising. We've seen a number of candidates, yeah. especially on the abortion issue, yeah. try to moderate in a general election. Again, that happens. President Obama, then Barack Obama, famously shifted after defeating Hillary Clinton in a primary, went more to the center on economic issues and really angered a lot of folks in sort of the left wings of, of his party. The problem is this is a super important issue this yeah. election cycle. People are really paying attention on both sides yeah. to what you're saying. Yeah, we're seeing this, um, just like as you said, all across the country here. Um, in Iowa, for example, I would say Iowa 3 is literally the most important frontline race in the country that Democrats are trying to, trying to protect, that Republicans are trying to win. And you've got the Republican candidate who sat there, or stood there, I suppose, during the primary with his hand up in the air saying that he doesn't support any exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother, anything. And yet, 
like a week ago, writes an op-ed for the Des Moines Register completely changing his story. But his hand up in the air a moment, that is an ad that Congresswoman Cindy Axney is running against him in Iowa 3, and it matters. I think, again, you're going to see this continue to play out across the country as we actually hold these Republicans accountable for where they actually stand.